Hello everyone, the topic of today's video is data truncation and one of the major application is in digital signal processing. So you have a long signal and usually it is processed by segmenting this signal to a length of 50 millisecond or 100 millisecond and process then the next segment is processed and output and the length of these segments has implication. The shorter the length, then the processing will be like in real time. That's the advantage. But you make the length short, then you lose some frequency resolution of the segment. And we will discuss in today's lecture the application on data truncation and what are the criteria. Now, why do we need data truncation? There are many reasons. We need to reduce the signal so the numerical competition will be less intensive and less time consuming. You have 10 number to manipulate, it's going to be faster than 50 number. So that's one reason we need data truncation. Or a signal that goes for 10 minutes will take longer than a signal that goes for 7 minutes. Also, we may need to truncate or shorten the impulse response H of T. If H of T is long in the time domain, that means you have to wait long time to get the system response out. So maybe we need to truncate H of T without affecting the performance of the system. So the system response will be fast. Or sometimes we want to truncate, shorten the spectrum of the signal. X of omega and we will see in the sampling theorem if you have X of T and the highest frequency or the bandwidth is 20,000 Hertz you have to take at least twice that sampling rate so if it's the highest frequency 20,000 Hertz you need to take 40,000 sample per second so maybe we need to truncate the spectrum from 20,000 to 4,000 Hertz without affecting the speech. It's still understandable. I still can't tell who's speaking, but just eliminate those high frequency. So now I re reduce it or truncate it to 4,000. So now I can take only 8,000 sample per second instead of 40,000. And that means I can process less samples. I can save less samples, transmit faster. All these are application of data truncation. And we will see how do we truncate data. And what is the price we are paying for truncating the data? So our message signal is X of T. It could be something like this. So then I truncate it by a window. That means I multiply it by a window like this. And that's WT. That's the window. And this is the signal X of T that I truncated. That means I got rid of all these. Now this signal gonna be just X truncated and this is what this operation is so we call this X Omega T truncated signal X of T the original signal W of T is the truncated window let's see the impact in the frequency domain so multiplication in the time domain is convolution of the frequency domain so that means the spectrum of X omega t will be the convolution of this spectrum X of omega and the convolution of the spectrum of this one W of omega divided by the 2 pi. The truncated signal here now has a different spectrum. The spectrum X of omega will be affected by the spectrum of the window. So the spectrum of the original signal is this. Now the spectrum of the truncated signal is the whole thing here. So that means the value of omega will impact the spectrum of the truncated signal. And the challenge is how do we find a window such that its spectrum will not change X omega a lot. It's still X of W of omega going to be almost the same as X of omega. That's the challenge. How do you find this window? And there are so many research has been done to find the best window that will not impact the truncated signal. And I'm sure you already heard about the rectangular window, triangular window, Hamming window. Okay, so we said the big challenge is finding the window that will not affect the spectrum of the original signal. Let's take example that we already seen before, but now we're gonna look at this example from truncation concept not modulation so imagine just a simple signal you have which is just a pure tone cosine omega t 
that's your message you are transmitting and we know the Fourier transform of this is just two pulses it has only one frequency Omega zero so it has this pulse and the one in the negative Omega now I don't want to transmit the whole signal for like one minute or for one second I want to just transmit it to half second that's all so then I will multiply this signal by the window and let's take a rectangular window Omega R so if I multiply this signal by this this is the result signal X W T the truncated very simple to see things in the time domain now let's see in the frequency domain what does it mean the Fourier transform of this window the rectangular is a sync function which is this a multiplication in the time domain gave me this the equivalent is a convolution in the frequency domain that means I convolve X of Omega with the rectangular spectrum and when you do this convolution do you remember in the time domain analysis we did we found if you take any signal x of t and you convolve it with an impulse at any location you get the signal at t0 here we did the convolution in the time domain we can do the convolution in the frequency domain so instead of t you're gonna have omega instead of t0 you're gonna have omega 0 so when you convolve this signal with this one you will get an impulse located at this location which is this using this property and you will get this one at the location of this impulse and you will get this so what is the implication then of the truncation in the time domain well the implication is the spectrum of the original signal is very sharp at omega zero now the spectrum of the truncated signal spread it out it's an, yes you, you have a high frequency at omega zero but also you have frequency at higher than omega zero and low omega zero so basically the spectrum is smeared out or spread or leakage so you don't have a sharp frequency here now it is all these and that is the price of windowing those are the three prices we pay for truncating spectral spreading that means that spectrum here now spread it out spectral leakage that means that spectrum here now leaked to these loops and poor frequency resolution now instead of seeing sharp omega zero now it is poor resolution just to give you an example imagine if you have a signal and you have in this signal two frequency omega one and omega two next to each other so that signal could be probably something like this and it has two frequency omega one omega two now if I truncate this signal by this rectangular window now the spectrum will look something like this if I add these two spectrum it will look like this yes you still can see a peak at omega 1 and a peak at omega 2 but it's not sharp peak like those impulses here and here and this we call poor frequency resolution I won't be able to distinguish omega 1 and omega 2 I cannot tell if this is the two frequency if omega 1 is 100 and this is 200 maybe I won't be able to tell it could be 150 so poor resolution worst case scenario if omega 1 are very close to each other then you will get something like this you won't even you're gonna get a flat peak here and that's like 100 hertz and this is 110 you won't be, be, be able to tell even and that's what we mean by poor frequency resolution rule of thumb is the following how wide do you want the window of truncation the wider the window of truncation that means this is t here the smaller this main loop because this main loop is 4 pi over t so the larger t 4 pi over t will be smaller so that means this will be very narrow like here when you make t large and in this case if you have two frequency adjacent to each other and you choose t very large 
then still they speak of this sync function separated. You still can see, distinguish this frequency from this frequency. So how do you decide how big is T, the width? You decide the following. You first decide how much frequency resolution you want to establish. So let's say this is omega 1, this is omega 2. Then usually, as long as the main loop of the window or goes to here, as long as this distance, which is this distance, 2 pi over t, equal omega 2 minus omega 1, then you will be able. So if I have this sync function here, you will be able to distinguish omega 1 from omega 2 because if I add this and this, I will end up with a spectrum that will look like this. And I still can distinguish this omega 1 from this omega 2. This is the criteria. So you decide what's the frequency resolution. Do I need to see 10 hertz? That's mean 2 pi times 10 hertz. So the smallest frequency resolution separation is 10 hertz. That will determine this. Then you solve this equation. 2 pi over t and solve for t. So t then will be from here. The width of the window has to be 2 pi over the frequency resolution that you are interested in looking at. And if I express omega as 2 pi f, this is the same as 1 over f2 minus f1. So if I want to see a frequency resolution of 10 hertz, then the width of the truncating window for rectangular has to be 1 over 10 hertz. So that is 0.1 second or 100 millisecond. And that's how you determine the window of truncating. Extremely important concept. You have to see the application, how much of frequency resolution you need to see. And in cochlear implant, when the processor pick up the speech signal, what they do in cochlear implant, so let's say this is the speech signal of somebody talking. So you are talking to somebody who has a cochlear implant maybe for 10 minutes, carrying out a conversation about the day. So how's the cochlear implant processor is working? It takes 25 millisecond truncate and do the Fourier transform of this 25 and then excite the electrode inserted in the cochlea and then pick up the next 25 millisecond, process it, it's so fast and find the frequency content, then excite the auditory nerve in the cochlea and so forth. Why they choose the 25 millisecond? Because all they care is about a resolution of 1 over 25, 10 minus 3 millisecond. So that is 1000 divided by 25, that's 40 hertz for their cochlear implant application. And that's how you determine the truncation. And you know, there is an analogy to it. You, we always say, before you reach a decision, make sure you listen enough or you do an enough analysis or research, then you will reach a good decision. That's the same thing. Before you truncate, try to listen for a longer period. The longer the period you listen to the signal, the better frequency resolution you will have. So as I said, the challenge is to find what is the perfect window to use. Do you use a rectangular? Do you use a triangular window? Do you use Hamming window? Well, the criteria is the following. Those are the three criteria you want. You want smaller main loop width. That means that's the main loop width. You want the smallest. You want to choose a window that will give you a small main loop width. So I can distinguish a frequency here from here if the main loop is small. Two, side loop with high roll off rate. This is the side loop. So I want them to decay very fast. Something like this decay. The third one is a small side loop peak. So that means I need the side loop, the first one, to start low doesn't start that high maybe it starts here so these are the three criteria small main loop the side loop has a high roll off rate and the side loop starts with a small peak so let's look at some famous window we have rectangular window 
we have Prattle's window, which looks like this. We have Hanning, Hamming window, Blackman, and Kaser window. And each of them has different main loop width. That's the main loop width. So the smaller the main loop, the better is the window. So if I look at this, which one has the smallest is this, the smallest main loop. So the rectangular in this criteria is the best choice. Now the roll off, I need a very fast roll off. That's here criteria. Which one has the highest roll off is the minus 18 is the best. So that means Hanning window and Blackman window is the best for a very fast roll off. Which one has the smallest peak side loop? That means which one that starts with a small side loop? It's this one and this one, the Blackman and the case. That start. Maybe they start like larger main loop, but then these will be small. So it depends on your application. If you want a small main loop and you don't care about the roll off and this, then pick up your rectangular. If you care about the roll off, Hanning window or Blackman window. Hanning window is a good choice because it has a very fast roll off than the Blackman and it starts with a small main loop. So many applications you will really find the Hamming, the Hanning window used more often. Now Hamming also used a lot because it has a peak side level very small, minus 42. Okay. Let's see window truncation in filter design. And we will compare two types of window, a rectangular window and a triangular window. Let's say we have a system and the impulse response is H of T. Now we know this system H of T, if I find the frequency response H of omega will look something like this. That's a low pass filter with cutoff frequency this one and this is an ideal low pass filter see how drop pass and we know we cannot build an ideal low pass filter why look at its impulse response h of t it's non-causal that means if i excite this system with an impulse at t equals zero it's already giving me an output before it even see the input in addition to that h of t will just keep going going for a long time that means i have to wait for a long time for the system so we use truncation and how do we use truncation? We multiply the ideal impulse response that I want with this window. And when you do this, you will get H of RT, the solid line here. If I multiply the ideal H of T with this window, the triangular window, then I get the dotted one, impulse response, this one. So that is, so far it is good in, in the sense it I don't have to go just wait, wait, wait for the impulse response. Now it end at this T over two. Now about the causal, don't worry about it because what we can do is shift it. So instead of this one start at T zero, it's gonna start here. So it's causal. That means I have to wait that, that long to see the system response. So if the system excited by this impulse, the output will start like this and peak here. So I will see a peak at T zero. That's the delay and that's a causal system. Okay. So truncation, I multiply this window by the ideal impulse response, I get, I get a practical filter. Let's see the impact in the frequency domain. So the Fourier transform of my ideal filter is this one, and the Fourier transform of this rectangular window is this one, and multiplication in the time domain, it's convolution of these two in the frequency domain. And remember convolution, you flip this around the vertical axis, you go from infinity and you slide it, multiply, integrate, slide, multiply, integrate, and that's what you will get. This is your filter so it's not ideal anymore and if you use the triangular it's this filter with rectangular this filter decay faster with triangular window it decay slower so if i want to cut off this frequency i still gonna see up to here for triangular i will see all the way up to here so triangular that's a disadvantage but one advantage of triangular it's flat at the pass band. Here there is some ripples. If your application can tolerate the ripple and need a decay and cut off frequency and the decay pass, use rectangular. If your application re need a flat response and doesn't care if it decay slowly, then use a triangular window. Well, this end up the Fourier transform and the application of Fourier transform and system analysis chapter. Thank you.